while ago, I applied to do a master's of electrical and computer engineering at the University of Waterloo. And to my surprise, I got accepted. Now, the reason I was surprised was because I did my undergrad in mechanical engineering. So I thought if you're going to do a master's in something, I thought they would maybe give preference to students who did their undergrad in electrical and computer engineering, but they didn't. They really sent me an offer. And honestly, I was, I was really excited about it until it hit me. Do I really want to go back to the hell of engineering? Is the master's actually going to help me or is it going to be a waste of time? Is this going to be good for my career or am I wasting money? So in this video, I want to share my thoughts process when it comes to making this decision and hopefully get some of your insight as well maybe you're also deciding on whether or not pursuing a master's is right for you so maybe you can relate now it's not common for engineering students to get masters because it's not like a field like medicine or law where you need to do additional schooling after your undergrad it's pretty unconventional in engineering so why did i even apply to begin with well i worked as a mechanical engineer for three years most of the time i'd work on electronic enclosures and treat everything inside the enclosure like the pcb or any software as a black box you know primarily focusing on material selection manufacturing and the overall mechanical design now my undergrad in mechanical engineering gave me enough fundamentals and background to be able to do that however my software knowledge to me just always felt weak it kind of bothered me that i didn't truly understand what was going on when i was looking at these enclosures from a software perspective. Now, that doesn't mean I don't like mechanical engineering. I just wanna be the type of engineer that understands both the hardware and software of a product and just be that well-rounded type of person. You know, I wanna understand both hardware and software. So yeah, that's sort of why I applied to this master's program. I just wanted to learn more software. Now, most people would be like, okay, why don't you just take an online course or do a bootcamp to learn that software? And that's a valid question because coding bootcamps have been so viral especially in the last few years. These are all fair questions that I even asked myself. And when it comes to teaching yourself online, there are two concerns that I had, and that's accountability and credibility. First, keeping yourself accountable to actually do the online tutorials and build projects alone in your basement is kind of difficult, right? There's no deadlines, there's no due dates, so it becomes very difficult to actually do the things you set out to do. Second, if you wanna use that knowledge to actually work in the industry, having that piece of paper having that degree will give you credibility maybe in 2020 2021 2022 you can get away with coding boot camps because a lot of people did but now you it's you know because some people are doing it it's quite difficult to get that credibility if you want to land a job in this field down the line coding boot camps or youtube tutorials alone i found don't just cut it anymore all that being said when i was trying to make this decision someone asked me well like What's your ideal job? What is it that you want to be doing in your future? Well, there's really a few main things. I want to build things. I want to have the flexibility to work from home because I'm just more productive and happier overall. And obviously I want to make good money. And so I then asked myself, does getting a master's degree help with that? For the most part, you can't really work from home as a mechanical engineer. So I guess maybe to some extent, but is it bad or is it naive of me that when I think about this master's, I'm just thinking about doing it to learn software and get a deeper understanding of it. I'm not even thinking about what potential job I can get after. I just genuinely want to learn this stuff. I want to demystify in my head. I'm not really thinking about the ideal job I could get at this point. Now, I do think in my head, the ideal job that I would love to do in the future is like be like head of product management or the VP of product at a company. That would be like the ideal job in the future. So I think now I know some product managers or some people that work in product, you don't necessarily need a technical background, but I feel like having both a hardware and a software knowledge could potentially help with that, especially if I want to be like working in product for a software product. I feel like maybe it would help to have an understanding of software in general. Maybe not. That's sort of kind of what I'm thinking about or what I'm trying to brainstorm. But let's, let's look at the program itself first, right? Let's see what this program has to offer. You know, how much is it? How long is it? What courses do they have available? Do I have to do research? So when you're applying to do a master's, you can either do an MASC or an MEng. An MASC is research-based where you work really closely with a professor, which means you have less flexibility in terms of the courses you can choose. But on the plus side, the professor fully funds your program, so you don't have to pay tuition. On the other hand, an MEng is 100% 
course based so you can take whatever courses you want and you don't have to work with a professor but obviously you have to pay for it yourself and you have to fund yourself and pay for the tuition so you can think about an MNG like a shorter second undergrad now under MNG there are two types there's one with co-op and regular the MNG co-op program is 20 months long and the regular one is only 16 months obviously if I'm doing this full time I'd be taking two courses per term for four terms which ends up being eight courses in total and yeah because the term is four months long that adds up to 16 months and if I do the co-op one then I do like 16 months of schooling and then like a four month co-op somewhere in the middle so I applied to both I applied to the MNG co-op and the MNG regular and I got into both so now I'm deciding which one to take if I should take any at all but before getting into the cost of these programs and the master's programs I'm thinking of taking I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this part of the video now in general in your life if you want to have more work-life balance or you want to be more productive overall it definitely takes a bit of practice so it helps if you have a place that you can go to to learn these things you know things that will help you be productive while also remaining sane there are so many websites out there that can help one of them obviously being Skillshare sponsoring this part of the video if you haven't heard Skillshare is an online learning community that has a lot of courses about topics like project management productivity and time management they're all pretty inspiring classes especially if you want to learn things related to self-improvement personally one of my favorite courses has been product for creators by Ali Abdal. If you use YouTube at all, you've most probably seen him and heard about this course before. I have my own systems to manage my workflow and keep myself organized, but it's always interesting to see how other people do it because maybe we can learn a thing or two about how they keep themselves organized and we can apply it to our own systems. One of my favorite concepts that he talks about is productive procrastination. And I basically got to watch it for free because usually if someone is sponsored by Skillshare, you get one month of free Skillshare using their link. And so I have a similar link as well. The first 500 of you to use that link will get a free trial of Skillshare. You know, just like I did when I was first getting started. Anyways, let's go back and talk about the master's program and run through the numbers and see how much something like this would cost. Luckily, I'm not an international student. And after doing some digging, here's what I found. It wasn't easy to find these numbers and how much things cost. It's like hidden within like the university's websites, under website, like it's it's hidden. It's not easy to find. Now, if I do decide to do this full time, that means I'm taking two courses per semester, it will cost me $3,400 per term. For contacts, my undergrad was about 7,000 to 8,000 per term and I was taking like five or six courses. But anyways, because the master's has four terms, doing the math, that adds up to 13,600 for the four terms or 16 months. There will probably be some extra little hidden fees. So let's say $15,000 for this master's program. If I decide to do a part-time, it will probably cost the same as full-time. Just instead of paying the $15,000 over 1.5 years, I would be paying it over three years. Because in the part-time program, I'd be taking one course per semester, whereas the full-time program, I'm taking two courses per semester. Now, $15,000 is a lot of money. I'm not gonna say it's little, but when you put it into perspective, like 15K, that's like six months of rent in like Toronto or San Francisco, or like if you're living in New York City, that's like four months of rent right there. It still is a lot of money, but when you compare it to the price of rent, I guess it doesn't really feel that bad. Obviously, ideally I'd be working while doing this master's, so I'm not just like spending money without making any money. Now that we know the cost, let's see the kind of courses we can get out of this program. Because at the end of the day, that's what really matters. I don't wanna be doing unnecessary theory. I want practical project-based courses. Cause I already did my undergrad. I did a lot of unnecessary theory. I'm just trying to learn some the useful concrete stuff without any of the fluff that comes with it. Now they offer a ton, a ton of courses in electrical and computer engineering. And you're allowed to take eight. And so there are six that have caught my eye so far based on what I want to learn, right? I'm trying to have a decent foundation of software. I'm trying to learn courses like data structure and algorithms and just to be able to understand, you know, code and software. And so some of the courses I was looking at were things like ECE 606, which is algorithm design and analysis, ECE 650, which is methods and tools for software engineering, ECE 651, which is foundations of software engineering, ECE 656, which is database systems, ECE 621, which is computer organization, and ECE 752, which is software architecture 
and design. Now, maybe if you did an undergrad in ECE, then you've probably seen courses like this before, but these are things that I have never taken in my undergrad as a mechanical engineer. So that's why I'm trying to learn more about it. I did teach myself a little bit already through online courses and some tutorials on YouTube, but you know, I'm just trying to learn more and get a solid official foundation of this stuff. Now, from what I read about the course outline and the course syllabus in ECE 650 and ECE 651, you're just learning the foundations of software engineering. You're getting familiar with things like data structures and algorithms, which is something that I need. And the remaining courses that I listed are sort of complementary to that. Like for example, learning databases is important as well as computer organization. Now I'm not looking to become an extreme expert in software, but it is something that I have expressed an interest in. So I want to kind of explore that interest of mine. And I don't know, I just think it'll be so beast to be good at hardware and software rather than just do one. Now I know it sounds like mechatronics and whatnot, but usually like you end up kind of even in mechatronics, like working in one field, I kind of want to work in software too. Now, one thing though, instead of taking a master's, apparently there's this thing where you can do, where you can be a non-degree student, where you just take courses at a university just for fun, just for personal interest. And I was looking into that. I don't know if Waterloo offers it, but other universities like University of Toronto does, but it, I tried it and it's, it's difficult to actually take the course. They don't let you in the, especially if a course is busy, which you know, most of these courses are packed and there's long wait lists. They give preference to students or degree students. So if you want to take a course just for fun or for interest, it seems to be kind of challenging. I've tried. So that's another reason for why I might just do this one year masters, but it would be so, so nice if I can just take one or two, maybe three courses, obviously I'll pay for it and just take the course for fun to learn it without the stress of, degree and all this other logistical stuff that comes with getting an education. Really, all I want is to have both hardware and software knowledge so I'm able to build some pretty cool stuff. I think getting a master's and taking these additional courses is beneficial, it will help me, and you really can't go wrong with some additional education, but it's just so unconventional for engineering students to do masters that that's why I keep overthinking it. So yeah, I don't know. I think right now I'm really tempted to just, you know, accept it. Cause if I accept it, it wouldn't start till January of 2025 anyways. So I'm tempted to accept it and then do my own sort of education on my own, kind of teaching myself. So then, and then start it in January, spend 2025 kind of learning all these concepts and yeah, come out of it a better engineer, a more well-rounded engineer. That's sort of what I'm tempted um, to do now. But if anyone has any feedback or advice in the comments, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Anyways, that's it. If you're in a similar situation, I hope this was relatable. Otherwise, I hope this video brought you some kind of value. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.